So, so what is the most surprising insight that a guest has imparted on your show? And also what's the best piece of advice a guest has given maybe something even that you've taken for yourself in your own career? Yeah. In terms of maybe surprising insight, I've heard a lot of kind of mixed reviews on how challenging the venture capital process has been for Mm. these companies, which maybe isn't surprising if you're very kind of versed in the space, but typically from an outsider's lens, it always sounds like this kind of impossible task of raising money. And especially at some of these valuations that these companies are bringing in. Uh, But there's a lot of founders that we're able to get through it fairly easily, right? And mm-hmm. uh, able to kind of make that that leap into entrepreneurship, or re- immediately raise several million dollars and be off with just an idea and, and start building a product. And so it's been kind of incredible for me to hear, well, you don't need to actually have a full product already built out. You don't have to work without a salary for a year and a half to build a full product before this can actually be something feasible. There's a lot of people that are kind of midway through their life. They might have wife, kids, uh, and they're able to still make this transition because of some of the different financing resources that are that are available out there. Uh, in terms of the second half of your question, maybe the, the most valuable insight, I think there's so many different resources that I've learned from entrepreneurs on at this point. And I mean, Secure Ventures, I think is is no exception to that, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. even just for me as an interviewer, again, I I hear these different stories. The biggest theme that really rings true for me is just the resilience that's required in order to build a, a successful startup, right? So, I mean, again, a lot of these founders are kind of still in the trenches, still building. Uh, but even just hearing the stories from the ones that are a bit further along, it's like everyone's gone through some sort of difficult challenge. Oh, yeah. There's always something that's unexpected. And there's going to be a different way to solve each of those challenges for kind of every company, every founder team. Uh, but as long as you're able to just kind of say, okay, I understand that these challenges are going to come. How am I going to push through this? Maybe it's a full product pivot even, which Mm -hmm. sounds incredibly daunting, but as long as you're willing to just find some sort of strategy to keep moving forward, then you're going to keep on moving and and you're going to succeed eventually. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. I mean, that sounds like a sort of a transition to my next question, but were there any particular stories that you've heard where it it seemed like, especially like the cards were stacked against you know, the startup, but it, it somehow, whether by an extreme pivot or just sort of, you know, a last minute, uh, you know, intervention or something that they, they managed to still make it work. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think if you think about the timeline of when I've been interviewing some of these founders, there's probably no more concentrated time in history for yeah. unexpected surprises and just poor timing. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. I've been talking to to founders again, kind of early 2021 here. And so they're telling me their stories of going through COVID in, in 2020, mm-hmm. what that really did to to their businesses and, and some of the different ways that they had to pivot. Now, thankfully, cybersecurity is certainly a less impacted industry than many others. If you think about uh, like hospitality or retail oh, yeah. uh, or businesses like that, but uh, certainly a lot of challenges, especially again, going back to the the trying to raise money piece, uh, trying to go through pitches without actually getting to meet these different venture capitalists in person, uh, no longer being able to rely on those kind of local connections as much. I mean, in terms of examples in particular, uh, Secure Stack, for example, completely pivoted their platform uh, in the middle of COVID in part, just trying to find a new way to to get traction with customers, get traction with investors. Another good example was Invisit, Dean Shapiro. They went ahead and and pivoted from a B2B offering to B2C at some point in there as well. Or I think it was vice versa. It was originally B2C and then later transitioned to B2B, had a -hmm. full name change within that as well. Um, And just trying to to capitalize on where they found their product was going to have the most fit. Were, do you, have you had a sense of whether um, just funding opportunities kind of got a little tighter in during COVID? Because, where, where, you know, I, I know some people, you know, a lot of reports say that the, you know, the companies that in, invested hard when everyone else was, you know, storing against, uh, you know, future calamities or whatever, were the ones that really uh, cashed out. Do you have a sense of whether uh, people were, were, were making, you know, were taking wild chances on, on startups or <laughs> were, or were they keeping their cards a lot closer to their chest just because of the uncertainty of the future? Yeah. I think, 
I mean, ultimately, if you think about March, April, May last year, it mm-hmm. certainly slowed down for a couple oh, of yeah. months. There was just so much uncertainty in terms of oh, yeah. what was really going on in the market, how some of these different uh, startups were going to be able to succeed and kind of push through. But if you think mm-hmm. about past those couple of months, it picked back up very quickly. And if yes. you look at just kind of year over year investment, if I remember correctly, 2020 actually had more startup investment uh, than like VC backed investment uh, than 2019 did even. So it certainly picked back up there. But again, it's really challenging for a company if you're trying to raise money in a kind of short time frame, and then three months are just kind of wiped off of the board. And then there's kind of this backlog of companies that are trying to raise money, you increase competition. So even though more money is being shelled out, part of that could also lend itself towards higher valuations, as opposed to supporting more companies. So there's a lot of different right. factors that are at play there as well. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.